You know how some fishing trips you're more optimistic than others? Well, today I feel very, very positive. I definitely like our conditions. It is a gorgeous spring day here in South Louisiana. Completely clear skies. We've got normal tides finally. We've been dealing with low tides for so long. But right now we're at the tail end of the falling tide and the water's still not low. I mean, there's no exposed bank at all. So I definitely like our chances today. Pretty much everything's on the menu. I don't know what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna push back in the marsh first off and see if I can run across some trout and redfish. But then I may fish some deep water. I don't know, who knows? Just come along with me, let's see what we're gonna do. All right, water clarity is really, really good. That tide is not doing a whole lot right now. It's gonna rise. We don't have a very good range at all today. Yesterday was a flip-flop day. So just building back today, maybe like a half foot, 0.6, somewhere in there. I generally don't fish on days with meager tides like this, but the conditions were just too good otherwise, you can tell. Just an absolutely perfect day, beautiful. The day you just want to be on the water. Water temp is 63 degrees, which, you know, everything will bite in 63 degree water. I mean, they love that. Everything loves that. Everything in the marsh. Hopefully we can find some bait today. Been seen a little bit just on the ride out here. It's always the key this time of year, like every time of year, but especially in the spring, in the early spring, everything is starving to death. I'm starting this morning with a bait that's been so productive for me, the Screen Hornet Matrix Shad. I got that on a quarter ounce death grip jig head. I'm planning to start at least the beginning of the day fishing some fairly shallow water, so a quarter ounce is the right weight for what I'm gonna be fishing. Just spooked a redfish. The tide is really, really dead. I mean, dead, dead. It's not moving at all. So these fish are just sitting down, not feeding. That's okay, the tide's gonna turn, it's gonna rise, and then everything should get nice and active. Just gotta bide our time until then. Hopefully pick up a fish or two, even in this dead tide. I hope to do some cooking for y'all today, but we just gotta find a main ingredient first. Brought everything but the fish. <laughs> just spooked another red. There's some fish in here, for sure. Like this, see? What the heck? Dude, you got too close to that bait. Well, that's a good sign, you got some bait. In my view, a dead tide is the toughest situation in marsh fishing. Nothing is harder. Not wind, clouds, sun, sleet, snow. Nothing is harder than a dead tide. Fish just don't feed. They just don't. Catch one here, one there. That's, that's the best you can hope for when the tide is dead. Just spooked another red. Oh, no, it's a stingray. I can see him. Guess I should put my glasses on. This water's clean enough to sight fish. Not very deep at all, at all. Let's get some glasses. There might be a red there. See that push? Let's see. Get out in front of it. I'm pretty sure that is a red. Swam right by me, if he is. Even when you can sight fish. <laughs> Throw a bait right in front of them, they don't feed. Oh, that may have been why. Dragging a little snot grass. All right, as you might imagine, on a day this beautiful, the gnats are out in full force. I gotta get some of the magic sauce. Well, once again, look at this, snot grass. Okay, it might change how we approach these fish. A lot of snot grass in here. First, we gotta put on the marsh romance. All right, got a little panic stricken for a minute. Couldn't find my marsh romance. Whew, natty natty. All right, that stuff is worth its weight in gold. Man, is it a difference maker. The gnats just hate it. <laughs> I mean, they're gone. It's like crazy. It's the craziest thing. See a dust cloud from a red I just spooked. That's unfortunate. Definitely some fish in here, for sure. Wish I'd waited to come in here until that tide was rising. All right, no bait, no bites on the straight matrix. I'm gonna throw this gold blade, quarter ounce death grip, shrimp creole matrix shad. Working this actively will help me stay above that snot grass to some degree.
Oh, 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 I missed him. Bad hook set. I mean, second cast. I saw the fish and everything. Goodness. All right, some widgeon grass. Good to see. Good to see all that coming back. Just spooked a red. I mean, right in front of the boat, just sitting there in the mud. That's what they're doing. It's a good sign. There's fish around. They'd be up and feeding if the water was moving. I mean, he was just right in front of the boat, just sitting there on the bottom. Just taking in the sights, waiting for the water to move. All right, I guess we're going to give up on stop number one. Got to find somewhere where the water's moving. There's fish in here. I might come back in here later today, but they don't want to play right now. A couple of bites, one that I really should have had. But other than that, nothing doing. So we're going to head find somewhere else with some more cooperative fish. I hope. <laughs> we'll see. All right, back to the Green Hornet for now. Stop number two. It's kind of a elongated pond, irregularly shaped and dead-ended, the kind I like. Water here is not quite as pretty. Not quite as good. We'll see what happens as we push into the back of this pond. Should get better. Up here in the front, it's just it's just okay. It's fishable, not bad. I'd like it to be prettier. And unfortunately, it's still dead. <laughs> no water moving here either. fish what is that a trout it sure is all right i think it might be a legal trout <laughs> that's a little unexpected yeah he's not very legal but he's legal all right that's a good way to get things rolling the water here at the beginning of this pond is five feet that's where i caught that trout in this little bit deeper water <laughs> there goes a red there goes another red Look at that, look at that, look at that. Probably more fish that are just sitting around waiting for the tide to move. Look at that dust cloud, look. Red just kicked off out of here. Look, there, there goes another one. There's fish in here. There are fish in this little pond. Man, I wish the water was moving. <laughs> it will, it's going to move today. I'm confident of that. It should rise pretty soon, and we, what little wind we do have is out of the east, so that's going to help it to rise. At least we have found a couple of ponds that are holding some fish, so once that water does start moving, we can come back in here and probably do pretty well. I'm not giving up on this pond yet. I, I think we'll catch a fish or two, even with this dead tide, but probably won't be overcast, that's for sure. Kind of one of those days where you don't mind waiting. It's just great being outside on a day like today. This is the first day I've fished since the change to daylight saving time. It's now eight o'clock. It's late quickly this time of year, but still have plenty of time to fish. We're gonna catch some fish today. I feel confident of that. Shoot, I missed him. Man, I keep missing fish. That was a great hit. You know, that's a sign that these fish just are not committing to these baits. You know, normally redfish, it's like, <laughs> if they bite, you're gonna hook them. Seemed like a pretty decent fish too, based on the remnant of the push. After he missed the bait, Kind of a little bit snake bit today, but eh, it happens on a weak tide. It just does. You don't get those full committals. A lot of lip hooks. You know when they're feeding. I mean, that's when you get the baits down in their gullets. You couldn't miss it if you wanted to. Oh, look at that. He followed me in and didn't hit it. <laughs> That was a big red. That was not a small red. Oh, another one, another one. 
This is crazy. This is crazy. You gotta figure sooner or later one of these things is gonna screw up, right? I've gotten like six or seven bites from redfish and haven't connected. That's incredible. Even in a bad tide, that's, that's bad. Oh, bunch of reds. Man, they were big. I saw them at the last minute. They were big. <laughs> Be fighting those fish for a while. You see the dust clouds. Theme of the day. Look at the dust clouds. <laughs> those were monster fish. Those were 30 inch plus fish. They wouldn't have worked for my catch and cook. <laughs> I don't keep fish that big. They were fun to fight though. Well, that's for sure. We'll see what the rest of the day holds, but I can't see myself not coming back in here when this tide is moving. There's just too many reds in this pond. Definitely a good find. Just need a trigger to get them to start feeding. Oh, there he is. What the heck? I finally catch a fish and it's a freaking gar. <laughs> Oh, come on. That's not even right. That's not even right. These guys are a pain. Normally you don't hook them, but I got lucky on this one. Super lucky. There you go. Get on with your day. There's a fish. Goodness, finally. <laughs> he's swimming at me and he's big. There he goes. There he goes. All right. I'm going to go to the back of the boat. we go to the back. I'll do whatever you want. Man, that's like the seventh or eighth hit I've gotten and finally connected. All of them are real similar. This is a big red. I don't know. They were all this big. I don't think he's a giant. I don't think he's like the 30 plus inches that I saw, but I think he's probably upper slot. 25, 26, 27, somewhere in there. I do know that he's not happy with his current predicament at all. This fish is probably too big for me to keep, although I might keep him so I can show you my recipe. I mean, heck, it's not gonna be bad, right? It's not as good as some of his smaller brethren. Oh, he came off. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's been that kind of a day. Look at that. Just pulled the hooks. Just pulled the hooks. Nothing you can do about it. Well, that's disappointing. I may not have kept him, but you still want to lay a hand on him. Stick a tag in him or whatever. But maybe it's a sign that they're starting to feed more aggressively. So that's good. Got to look on the bright side. I was hoping that fish was going to be lunch. Instead, he's going to get to eat his own lunch. And he thought this green horned matrix shad was his lunch. Fish that size, this little babe just be a little snack. But how often you clean a big red and his belly's loaded with little crabs? Particularly this time of year, they just eat little bait. It's mostly all they have available to them. Oh, goodness, there's two reds. They're going to see my shadow. Yep, they saw me sitting right on that point. They just came out of this little area and were curling around there. They were big reds. I made my cast on that point before they were there. There's a fish. That's a more manageable red. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this fish is legal. Pretty sure. If he is, he will definitely be lunch. Wow. Yeah, dude, you were very, very well hooked. All right, let's see. Check the length. I'm pretty sure he's 16. Yeah, he's 17, so he's going to go in the box. The date of today is March 12th, and as of today, that fish is still legal in Louisiana. In a few months, it probably won't be. The Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Commission passed 
the latest regulation change, all the previous ones have gotten shot down <laughs> by the legislature, but I think this one's gonna stick. And that changes the regs on redfish to 18 to 27 inches with none over 27, and guides are no longer allowed to keep their limit. Oh, and the creel limit drops to four. Currently it's five. Oh, speckled trout. That's not far from where I caught the other trout on the way in here. Uh, I think he's also a keeper. Not by much if he is. Might not be, actually. Let's see. Oh, yeah, he is. He's 13 and a half. Yeah, looking down here. I mean, I'm guessing that's fish right around here. Not a ton of water. Three and a half. Oh, there's a fish. Another trout. Yep, another trout. He will not make the cut. I'm pretty certain of that. He would have made the old cut, <laughs> but not the new cut. Croaking male. Let's see how big he is. Yeah, he's 12 and a half. All right, one of my camera batteries died when I was releasing that fish. So I took the opportunity to take my coat off because it's getting warm. Let's see if I can catch any more trout here at the entrance to our redfish pond. It's definitely a little bit of water here. Holy fish was mostly about two feet. But right here it drops off and where we are, it's three and a half feet. I saw five feet on the way in. After I caught that first one on the way in, I did post up and make a few casts. I did get another bite, but I missed it. and couldn't get another bite after that. So I don't think there's a million fish here, but there's Apparently, at least a few. Oh, that was a good hit. Wow. That was a great hit. Feels like a decent, fi decent fish. Uh, he's a keeper, I think. I think he's a keeper. We're going to see. I don't know. Now I have my doubts. Caught him by a whisker. Hmm. If he's a keeper, he ain't by much. Sadly, he is not. Well, we're not going to get to eat him, but man, that was a fun hit. He smoked it. He smoked it. You know, you wouldn't expect to catch really big trout inside the marsh this time of year doing this. I do catch big trout. Well, big for me. 20 to 22 inches even. Fishing those deep holes. Oh, goodness, another hit. But I haven't really tried that yet. I was hoping to today. But we got to get this tide rolling first. That's a key ingredient. It's essential. And that's usually a March, April, even in a May bite. Oh, missed him. Another bite. They're right here under the boat. Fortunately, I kind of got right on top of them. All right, no more bites. Before I leave, I'm going to see if I can reposition up in this bayou a little bit. Cast back to where these fish are holding. Again, I don't think it's a giant school, but there's a few there. Definitely worth making a few more casts into. Interestingly, there's not a whole lot of water in this bayou. It's only 1.9 feet. The only deep water is out here. Oh, that's a good hit. That was a good hit. Doesn't mean it's a good trout, but it was a good hit. <laughs> These are not comparable to the fish I caught in my last video at the trestle. You saw that one. With some really nice trout. These are not nice, but man, this fish just absolutely tagged the bait. Appreciate the thought, buddy. But you're not going to be fillets, or at least not yet. Maybe in a few weeks you will be for somebody. Fish that size will be legal literally in weeks with these temperatures getting warm. They're going to start feasting on brown shrimp soon. They grow in a hurry when that's the case. Lots of protein in those brown shrimp. They're not trophies, and it's far from every cast, but it's always nice finding a, a little trout bite. Particularly when you can jig them like this. It's my favorite way to catch them. You know what? I say that. <laughs> my favorite way to catch them is on topwater. 
which I haven't done yet this year. I've tried a few times, just haven't had any success yet. The water temps are still down, 63 right here. Not that you couldn't catch them on top in 63, but I like it to be upper 60s. That's when I really get rolling with the top water stuff. We just haven't had that this year. I'm probably gonna give this just a few more casts and then do my cooking segment. I always tend to eat lunch early when I'm fishing. Because, you know, you get up so early, you eat breakfast early. Just get hungry on a boat. And it's not like I can just pull out a bologna sandwich. <laughs> it's gonna take a little time to set up and to get that fish cooked. I think I'll probably just do that one redfish. That'll be enough for me for sure. This marsh looks pretty lush. I'm not sure I can get out on it, but I'm gonna try. See how deep the water is in it. All right, last cast. You hear that fish? It's your last opportunity to be seen on YouTube. Bite now or you'll never be famous. Nobody will ever know you. All right, no takers. Hopefully this tide picks up while we're cooking because I'm definitely not done. I want to fish some more. We'll see what else we can do today. We'll find some fish. Still very confident. All right, so I got this new Cajun anchor to hold my boat while I'll do these catching cooks. So now we got to get up there and see if this marsh is doable. See if we can get out on it. I used to duck hunt and stuff like this all the time. So I'm used to getting in marsh like this. Just have to clear out a little spot if the water's not too high. Obviously if the marsh is flooded, that's not doable. All right, it seems like it's gonna work. All right, here's my bin with all my goodies. Here's my camp stove. All right, as you might imagine, it's a little bit natty up in this marsh. I'm gonna get some more marsh romance. Definitely need it. First things first. All right, much better. That is one key with the marsh romance. You definitely gotta reapply it. The gnats are still around me, but they're really not landing on me. So we gotta go ahead and clean this red. All right, that's that for the cleaning. I did bring paper plates this time, unlike last time. Just need to rinse the fish in the bayou water. All right, there's our fillets. I'm gonna put them right here in the shade while we go ahead and heat up our camp stove. I'll probably put it right on, on top of this little ice chest. Try and get it as level as I possibly can. All right, I had to move it a little bit. Found a nice even area. Gotta get my cast iron skillet. Definitely important. All right, there we go. Didn't want to light, but now it did. All right, fresh fish, salt and pepper. That's all you need, salt and pepper. If you've seen my previous cooking videos with this camp stove, it gets hot super quick. It's 15,000 BTUs. This pan gets hot in no time. In fact, I think it may already be hot. All right, we cook with tallow. This is grass-fed beef tallow. I'm kind of one of those weirdos who doesn't use any seed oil. Plus, I think this just really sears fish and steak and everything else so well. Chicken, you name it. I'm a big time fan of tallow. We do have a little lean going on here. But they're gonna cook all right. They're gonna be okay. We go filet number one. Whoo, yeah, we're hot. Probably a little too hot. And filet number two. Oof. All right, as my wife will tell you, sometimes I do really dumb things. And I'm just realizing I did one of them. The butter, which is a key ingredient, is inside of this chest. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to cook these fish, turn off the fire, take off the stove, open the chest, get out the butter, but it should be okay. Just gonna add a few extra steps. All right, are our fish done? They very well might be. Yeah, that's not a bad sear. Probably should've gone another minute. I'll leave this one. Now you see this bloodline on the fish. On big reds, I cut, the, cut that bloodline out. On a little red like this, you don't even taste it. No idea it's there. 
All right, better see her on that one. I'm a big believer in not overcooking fish. I don't cook it long at all. About half as long on the second side as on the first side. This is gonna be so good. Wait till you try this at home. You will not be disappointed. All right, here we go. All right, actually I had three ingredients in there that I needed, one of which is butter. We're gonna take just a tiny little pat of butter because I've only got these two fillets. We're gonna put that, let it deglaze that pan. That pan's still super hot. That may be enough. Typically I use more, but obviously, typically I cook more than two fillets. Just kind of spread it around, let it get all that fish goodness off the bottom. I've got a few green onions, not a requirement, but they're definitely good. I've got, I had these cut up in my freezer, so I just decided to bring them. Ooh, that smells good. Goodness. That smells really good. Second to last ingredient, we got the hawk sauce, cayenne pepper sauce. This is just hot sauce. It's really not that hot. I don't like super hot hot sauce. And I really like this. It's just got a really good taste. Just put a few little dabs of that. And then definitely the most important ingredient, Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Be sure and use Liam Perrin's. It's the best by far. It's expensive, but it's the best. Worth every penny. All right, it's gonna be, oh man, does that smell good. Oh, that's not the last ingredient, I'm sorry. One more ingredient, very important. Sliced almonds. You can tell this bag's almost empty because I've been making this dish a lot because it's so good. So here we go, we got our sliced almonds. Put that in our hot pan. That's probably enough for two fillets. We're gonna mix that all up. Now, if you do this at home, you really should cut the fire off. You don't, if you're using a cast iron skillet, it's gonna stay hot for a while. You really don't need that fire going. All you can do at that point is burn your butter and that would not be good. Nobody would enjoy that. I like to put it in immediately after I cut off that fire. Of course, today I had to take the pan off and correct my mistake, but it's all right. It's gonna be very good. All right, so what we do here, we take this and spoon it out, put it on our fish, like so. Gourmet cooking that takes very little time. Anybody can do this. I mean, you saw what I did. Didn't take long. And trust me, when you eat it, you're gonna think you're eating fine dining. Whew, that smells like heaven. All right, here we go, finished product. Man, the fish is still piping. It's gonna be hard to eat. Oh. No one has ever, in the history of mankind, had a better meal than this in the marsh, I promise you. Whew, it's still hot. It's still very hot. It is so good. Invite your friends over and make this for them. Or better yet, don't invite them, because then there's more for you. All right, I'm going to finish eating. Next time you see me, I'll be in the next spot for the day, hopefully catching some fish. All right, what a feast. That was awesome. I'm now stuffed. I've come into a big lake. Wind's kind of shifted. It's, it's sticking out of the north, blowing east most of the day, but not anymore. But I'm going to kind of fish into this wind and then fish back down on the other side of the lake. I'm going to throw this blade for a while so I can cover some water. Water in here is perfect. It's very, very fishable. Probably not clean enough to sight fish, but plenty clean enough to catch fish. I'm, and I'm not much of a sight fisherman anyway. Now this blade catches absolutely everything in the marsh. I've caught everything on it. It catches a lot of trout. I mean, you think it's really a redfish bait, but I've caught a million trout on this thing, roughly. And I saw this abandoned trap for a minute. I thought it looked like a black drum from far off but it was pretty stationary that shows you water's not real deep in here it's vacillating between a foot and a half and two feet you can see a little bit of exposed bank i'm hoping this tide's rising but on the way over here i couldn't perceive any 
movement at all in the water. Might just be one of those days. Might just not do anything. Jumping mullet. Perfect redfish size. Look at the bait in here. This is impressive. Impressive amount of bait for early spring. It's good to see. Finding lots of good stuff to come back to when this water's moving. Better tide day. I don't know what kind of bait this is, man, but it's it's got to have some predators around. Got to. I'm guessing it's little mullet. I am seeing all this bait out here, and this water temp is up to, up to 66 degrees. It's got me wondering if I can catch a topwater speckled trout first of the year. Just looks very trouty. The mullet that are in here are perfect sized. Just seeing a whole lot of bait. Some of the mullet are jumping all the way out. Most of them are just kind of mixing. Oh, oh goodness. That was a trout. That was 100% a trout. It was a good one too. But it's the day of missed fish. <laughs> That's how I miss that one. But you know, topwater trout, you're gonna miss some. It's just part of the deal. You gotta get into an area that has a good number of fish to where you get enough bites and you can miss a few. And I was literally, that was gonna be my last cast. I was gonna put the top water down. I drifted across the entire opening here all the way to this side of the lake and didn't get a bite. I ran it through a bunch of bait. Oh, goodness, another trout, another trout. He jumped clear out the water. Now, that was not a big one. Definitely a keeper, but it looked like about a 13, 14 inch fish. All right, last cast. And then we're going to switch back to that matrix shad. From the matrix mullet to the matrix shad. Ooh. Oh, he missed it, of course. On my last cast. <laughs> He's gonna make me throw it a few more times. Three blow ups. Sooner or later, one's gotta screw up, right? Got these big meat hooks hanging off this thing. But you know, it's kind of the theme of the day. Without this moving water, the fish are just not motivated to feed. Probably if you could watch it in a slow-mo camera, they're just tail slapping the bait. They're not even really hitting it, trying to eat it. They're just wanting to kill it. And if you've targeted topwater trout before, you know some days they're just knocking the bait out of the water. Like you might, you might get 12 or 15 blow-ups without a hookup. Now, I don't know what this color is on this matrix model. You can tell this one's well used. Missing an eye, got some hook rash on him. That's how I like them. I like them when they're old and worn. To me, it looks like a wounded mullet. Definitely like some white showing through on my topwater baits. Man, it's hard to put this thing down, but no connections, I probably should. Might pick it up again. We'll throw that matrix shad for a little bit. Goodness, what is that? I think it's a red. I got a good hit and missed it. And then this dude just absolutely smoked it. I did not get a good hook set on him though. I feel like I still don't have this fish well, but he's not big. I mean, I think he's a keeper. Yes, he's a keeper. All right, all right. He was right on that point right there. And apparently he had a buddy with him. Either that or he had hit me twice. All right, let's put him on the tape. Oh yeah, 17, we get to take him home. All right, that was awesome. That was a really, really good, well, two really good hits. Let's see if we can get another one there. A lot of times what happens when you have multiple fish on a point or something like that, when you hook one, they all kind of run out with that fish. Again, I don't know if it was two fish or if the same fish hit me twice. Definitely could have been the same fish hitting me twice. 
Might have been a Lone Ranger. Never know. Oh, goodness, no, that was another freaking whore. Oh, there he is. Nope. Snag. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. The first one was definitely a hit. The second one was set into a log or something. Probably a, an old crap trap, if I had to guess. I've seen a few of those in this lake. Whatever it was, we got it back. Crisis averted. Oh, we messed up that point, but there's another one coming up. It's a good sign. We got three bites on that point. Things might be starting to pick up. That's a fish. What are you? Another red? Doesn't feel very big. Well, never mind. He's just swimming at me. Uh, no, he's he's about the same size as the one we just caught. Beautiful in that water. All right. Things are definitely picking up. Good to see. Whoo, boy. Lucky to get him. Shows you. They're just not inhaling it. Look at that. It's kind of, ooh, came right out. It's kind of how it's been today. 17 and a half. Boy, did he smack it. Another red. Goodness. I don't think, I don't know. I don't know if he's a keeper or not. We're going to check. He might be. I don't think he's growing by the minute. I think he's going to make the team. Beautiful, beautiful redfish. Look how pretty this fish is. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. He's 16 and a half. So I really can't tell in here what this tide is doing at all, but obviously the tide has begun to rise because these fish are just acting very different than they were earlier. You know there were fish all around where we were throwing. We got very few bites, and the bites we did get were half-hearted, lots of misses. Now, I don't think this tide's rolling or anything like that. They're just finally starting to do something and these fish are responding. Good to see. And you know, these fish, these kind of smallish reds, we started finding them in the late summer of 2023 after several lean years of red fishing, very lean. And these are all two year old fish from the spawn of 2021. So I guess now they're getting to be three year old fish. There's a bunch of them around, that's for sure. And redfish are really the only fish that I prefer catching small specimens. <laughs> I'd rather catch like a 18 inch red than say a 28 inch red. I mean, believe me, those hard hits and fights from a 28 inch red are definitely a lot of fun. That's a fish I'm gonna tag and release pretty much every time. I'm not saying I've never kept them that big, but there's really no point in keeping those fish. That's a fish that's getting really close to gone outside to spawn. I just don't want to kill it. Not that I fault you if you do. If you know you want to keep that size fish and feed your family with it, that's great. That's up to you. But I just don't like keeping them. But these 18 inchers, 17 inchers, I love them. They're fun to fight. They hit really hard. They're just a whole lot of fun. All right, I got to make a couple more casts with that Matrix mullet. Ooh, there we go. There we go. That's that's a decent trout, man. Hopefully we get him. The way today is gone, I'm not so sure, but that is a decent trout. Yep, definitely a trout. All right, about a 16, 17 inch fish. Look at that, on top water. So awesome to see, so awesome to see. Love these guys. The water's up to 67.8 degrees. I always say 68's my minimum, so it's pretty close to that. 
Minimum for throwing top water, I mean, definitely caught them in water colder than that, but chances are much better when it's 68 or above. And this time of year, they hit top waters midday. I actually kind of prefer, oh, oh, he missed it. That was a good fish. He missed it. He came all the way out. All right, there's a few fish in here. It dropped off to three and a half feet right here. That's why I picked up that top water. The rest of this lake is like a foot and a half. And this definitely seems to be where the trout are. Oh, another hit, just right here next to the boat. I might sit here a minute, sit here on spot lock. Oh, goodness. Oh, he missed it. That was a freaking tattoo. <laughs> How'd you miss that bait? These are not small fish. That one was definitely not a small fish. There's a lot of fish in here. They're attacking it, but they're not attacking it. just not getting the hooks. Okay, my boat is telling me the tide is definitely switched. It is rising for sure, because what little wind we have is blowing this way and the boat's going that way. So it's going with that tide. That's good. That's why these fish have all picked up. <laughs> Look at that. That's a small fish. That's a small one. He's just messing around with it. He hit it about 10 times. So one thing I like to do when these fish are not committing to top water, they're just hitting it. Look, another one. There he is. That one got it. That one got it. Got a little close to those hooks, buddy. I mean, that's just a... A solid keeper, 14 inch trout or so. Maybe not even that big. He is legal, but. Oh, yeah, look at that. One hook in the head, one hook in the mouth. So you got the front, that's good. Good sign. I was gonna say, one thing I like to do when they're not fully committing to the topwater bait is throw that scope stick, the jerk bait, usually. They'll seal the deal on that thing. Let's make sure this guy's legal. I'm pretty sure he is. All right, he's 14. Sitting on spot lock, catching trout on topwater baits. Nothing like it. I'll try and look up the color of this Matrix mullet. Don't remember off the top of my head, but I really like it. Just goes to show you the value of staying alert when you're out fishing. The only reason I'm throwing a topwater bait is because all the mullet I've seen in here. Figured there had to be some trout. Beautiful water, topwater colored water. Only thing it lacks in here is grass. Usually I really, really like grass. Something just hit up top right there. I'm throwing these topwater baits, not like caked grass, but sporadic grass. No grass at all in here. Well, I can't say none at all. A little bit of widgeon grass, not much. And I suspect there's no widgeon grass where I'm throwing. Only widgeon grass I've found has been along the shorelines. Oh, oh he missed it. <laughs> he took it down. That was not a big fish. That was not a big fish. He might have gotten a boat ride, but he wasn't trophy we we're gonna hang on hang him on the boga that's for sure oh goodness that's a big trout that's oh man i hope we get him that's a good trout i mean not a five pound or anything but he might be a three He's swimming at me. That's a big trout. Come on, dude. All right. Well, I might have big got him a little bit. I'm gonna say maybe two and a half.
All right, there we go. It's about a 20 inch fish. All right, all right. Yeah, he was hooked well. We weren't gonna lose him unless he popped the line. All right, he's bigger than I like to keep. I'm letting him go. That was the first cast I made out in this direction. I passed up all those fish. I fished along that shoreline for reds. It's good to see that fish that size are holding in here. You got a 20 inch, you might have a 24 or 25 inch. I literally haven't moved the boat. I'm just sitting here on Spylock. It's kind of an oddity catching fish on multiple casts on top water sitting in one spot. Usually you got to kind of keep moving and cover water. These fish are obviously fired up. They spent, <laughs> they spent the whole morning not feeding, so I guess they are fired up. Now the tide's moving and they want to eat. Oh, he missed it. If you've never targeted speckled trout with topwater baits, really any fish with topwater, very important when you get that blow up to just kind of pause before you set the hook. Because a lot of times they do miss it. Oh, another bite. A lot of times they do miss it. And if you set the hook, you're gonna pull the hooks way, you're gonna pull that lure way away from the fish and he's not gonna hit it again. If you just kind of stop and that depends. Sometimes you, you want to work it fast after they miss it. Sometimes you just want to pause. It just depends on the day. I usually pause and then continue with my cadence. This to me is a gold mine because I spend lots of hours in the spring looking for areas that I can catch topwater fish. This is one I've absolutely never fished before, but I will fish it again. And another tip is to fish with gear that allows you to make long casts. I love this Akuma Hakai. It's my favorite reel. All my rods have Akuma Hakais on them because I can throw it a mile. Even thrown into this wind, I can throw it forever. I've got 30 pound braid, super light braid. And I've got a fluoro leader. A lot of people think you can't fish a fluoro leader with top waters. You can. Can't really fish mainline fluoro, but with a braid mainline that floats, there's just not enough line, not enough fluoro between the braid and the lure to sink enough to, to mess up your action. If that makes sense. If you fish mainline fluoro, your line's gonna sink and it's gonna wanna pull the bait down. But as you can see, I got maybe a mm, three, four foot leader. It's just not enough line to pull that bait down. And I like the low vis nature of the fluoro. But if you're concerned about the fluoro sinking, just fish mono. I don't like tying topwater baits to mainline braid. No doubt in my mind the fish see it. I mean, as it is, you're trying to convince a fish to come up and hit that with these two hooks hanging off of it. <laughs> I mean, you know, and you're generally throwing topwater baits in pretty water, so they can see that. I don't want to add anything else that makes it look suspicious. I can't tell you how happy this makes me finding these fish. It's awesome. No guarantees they'll be here next time I come, but they should be. There he is. There he is. Oh, he, no, he's still on. Felt something slip. Thought he got off, but he did not. Unlucky for him. He's keeper size. Fourteen inches or so. Hooked him in the eye. In the mouth. Oh, came right out. Let's make sure he's legal. Pretty sure he is. Yeah, he's 14. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up and leave these fish biting. To me, it's just awesome finding something like this. I'll be back here 100%. May not catch him again. Who knows? 
maybe just got lucky today, but I feel good about this area for the next few weeks. So I will be back. Hot bait of the day. Matrix mullet. This thing, as I mentioned, is all beat to hell. That's how I like them. In fact, oftentimes I will actually scar up a bait before I ever fish it. Just take it out the package and just kind of cut it all up to me. They're just much more productive that way. And that one, I changed the hooks out, got some big old meat hooks on it. And it definitely paid dividends for us today. Lesson of the day though, is if you can, fish on a day with moving tide. Cause we did not have that for the first part of the day today. Fish were acting so ridiculous. But once that tide started rolling, the fish responded. I feel like we go anywhere now and catch fish. A couple of those areas we hit this morning were full of fish, but they just wouldn't bite. I bet they're biting now. Just love exploring. Just love going out in the marsh and see what you can find, finding new things. There's stuff like this absolutely everywhere that nobody fishes, nobody knows about it. People tend to hit the same areas over and over and over again. I like finding new areas. That's what gets me excited about fishing. That's why I do this. Uh, there are guarantees? No. If there are guarantees, though, I'd probably do something different. I wouldn't fish. I like the fact that you never know what each day is going to produce. You got to pay attention, like we did today. Saw all those mullets while we threw the topwater bait, and that's why we caught these fish. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed putting it together. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. You can do that by clicking that button right there. Also, here's two videos YouTube thinks you'll like. Check those out if you get a chance. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.